high in the rainforest lies a world virtually unknown to those who live on the ground. This biodiverse world is so challenging to reach that techniques for accessing the canopy have only been developed in the last 35 to 40 years. For the last nine days, I have been dedicating virtually every waking hour to learning the intricacies of these techniques, getting comfortable in the impossibly hot, humid, and distracting environment, all for one reason. My real goal is to bring nature journaling into the canopy where I think it can be a powerful tool for learning, research, education, and conservation. I've reached the training level where I can climb on my own and the first thing I'm gonna do is bring my nature journal kit up into the trees. Before I even got halfway to my branch, I was already distracted by a sloth that seemed to be climbing faster than me. Was that the same sloth that I had been seeing for a week, showing off its effortless climbing skills while I struggled with blisters, sore muscles, tangled ropes, confusing knots, and all my changes of clothing soaked in smelly sweat? I got over my sloth envy rather quickly once I realized that the sloth would probably suck at holding a watercolor brush. Hmm, now I just need to get into a position where I can actually nature journal from up here without dropping anything. First thing I'm going to try is setting up this hanging chair that my instructor had. Setting it up is not going to be as easy as it would be if you were just hanging it on your back porch, however. I ended up spending about 30 minutes just trying to get this chair set up. All that while hanging in a harness, pinching off my circulation high above the ground, and getting buzzed by at least five different species of blood-sucking insects. Luckily, the temperature is about 79 degrees Fahrenheit, and the relative humidity is probably around 83%. Now I just need to figure out a way of getting into this chair, which is easier said than done, especially since it is not life rated and I have to keep my bulky harness and all ropes attached to me at all times. Trying to get into this chair ended up being one of the scariest things that I've done in the canopy so far. Oh God, this is so friggin' hard. Maybe this isn't possible. Maybe I should just go back down. Whew. All right. Alright, so after struggling, struggling with that chair that wasn't working out for me, I just got into a position here uh, where I can kind of lean against one branch, can keep my line taut here in case I fall. I'm also not dependent on this, this branch for strength. If this branch that I'm standing on were to break, then um, I would swing out and be connected to my anchor up above, so I've caught this tight. Do you hear that? Oh, sh look at that, there's a poison dart frog. Oh, there was a poison dart frog right there calling. I think it moved because it saw me. They're poison dart frogs, even though we're super high off the ground and they're not exactly, they don't look like a climbing frog. They make it up here and they use these bromeliads. The bromeliads, a lot of these bromeliads hold a ton of water in them and the poison dart frogs use them for breeding. 
Um, I think I startled that one and it moved. It was right there when I turned around. But they've been calling since I've been up here. This um, is the Ophaga pumilio species, but the ones, uh, there's different color morphs on the different islands. So this is an endemic one right here. To get my page started, I'm using metadata, a cartoon diagram, and words to capture as much information about where I am with the least amount of time. Believe it or not, that snapping sound is made by the wings of that golden collared mannequin. If you can identify bird sounds, it's really easy to just write down that information on the side of your page. After all the work to get up here and all the preparation and time, I run into a small problem and start running out of ink in my favorite drawing tool. This is the Pilot Futayaku pen that you probably know is my favorite. And even though I carry two, it seems like both of them are running out of black ink. I don't have any other very good options and I'm just getting started with my nature journal page. So I have to make do. Luckily the gray side is still full of ink. Now I'm gonna start doing a collection. A collection is a classic nature journaling technique where you draw an assortment of, for example, animals or plants that you see. And I have a whole video about that that you can watch here. So right now I'm just doing sort of simplified drawings of some of the insects and plants. Even though I suck at whistling, I am trying to do my best to imitate the bird sounds that I hear. By imitating bird sounds with your own mouth, you can learn them much better. I have learned the calls of several of the local birds and also recognize the dart frog sound, but this particular whistling bird, I still am not sure what it is. Oh, uh, great. Another challenge. How am I supposed to see and draw around this rope and cumbersome knot? Did you hear that? That's the sound of chainsaws in the distance and that's one of the reasons why this work is timely and urgent. So um, this is an understudied ecosystem up here. There's so much that we don't know and there's so many undescribed species and a lot of that information and those species um, are going to go extinct before we have a chance to even learn about them. When I am in the tropics, especially highly biodiverse science field stations, I usually carry my binoculars around with me all the time, even when I go to the bathroom. However, climbing trees and all of the gear that's attached to me during that process has proven to be a really challenging place to try to carry my binoculars around safely. So this is actually the first time that I went up into the canopy with my binoculars. So I'm taking advantage to try to get a better look at some of the birds that I've been trying to ignore while I'm focused on learning the life or death climbing techniques. Now that I have some of those techniques down, I can look at the birds. I want my bird drawing to be quick and fault tolerant, direct to the ink, capture some of the characteristic marks, help me learn the birds, and capture it quickly on the page without too much fuss. Birding high in the canopy is a sublime experience. 
but I am quickly brought back to reality by the sound of the chainsaws again. That poison dart frog came back and I managed to get this video of it with the GoPro, even though it's out of focus. And you can see it backing itself into the bromeliad where the water is. It's either laying eggs, fertile or infertile eggs to feed its tadpoles or just moistening itself in the water. Right now, I'm about to find out if it's possible to do watercolor in my nature journal while in this harness up in the canopy. As long as I don't drop anything, I should be fine. This is one of the reasons why it's really good to have developed a uh, pretty streamlined system for doing watercolor. Obviously, I use a field palette that's easy to hold in one hand, and I can hold my sketchbook with my forearm, and I use these water brushes that hold the water within them. Otherwise, this would not even be possible. Just as I was getting ready to do watercolor, I saw this really cool hummingbird that I had been looking for in this area. So of course, I had to do a quick sketch of this uh, magnificent looking Jacobin. You can see this is an extremely simplified drawing of a hummingbird and I think this is the type of drawing that can be really helpful in the field and not intimidating to beginners. Now I need to get back to those watercolors. So here you can see I'm doing an assembly line approach to my watercolors. I'm starting with yellow, the easiest color to get muddy, and I'm doing everything on my page, all of the previous sketches that require yellow, and then proceeding to the next color. This is not necessarily the most artistic way to do your colors, but it is the most efficient, and it means once I start doing watercolor, I can do everything that requires watercolor. This is very helpful in challenging situations where you're worried about dropping stuff. It's also helpful in high humidity situations, such as the tropics, where you want to minimize the amount of time that you have wet paint on your page. Did I get what I wanted? Well, it was a lot harder than I was expecting and I've been practicing these climbing techniques and getting used to the climbing without incorporating the nature journaling part, without incorporating the filming part for the last week so that I would be able to um, try this out and try to do this in the canopy because I think that um, there's an urgency to nature journaling in the canopy and I want to be able to capture this information. So I'd say I learned a lot. It's not the best page I've ever done, but I have metadata. I have a little bit of homework there. I'm gonna show a comic um, describing how I got up into the tree. I have this sort of almost like a landscape ito showing me in the tree, some text describing what I'm seeing and hearing, and basically like a collection here of some of the animals mostly and a couple plants. Do you hear that right now? That's the poison dart frog. So there's poison dart frogs up in this tree and there's a lot of stuff going on in this canopy and I don't think that anyone has nature journaled up in the rainforest canopy before. So it feels really exciting. Uh, first try, I would call it a success even though it was, it was not easy. It was very hard. I'm, I'm getting chewed by bugs and um, it's really hot and humid up here. Uh, having some camera issues, some other technical issues. Um, it's not super comfortable. I'm strapped into this um, crazy harness. Got my nature journal bag sort of on the side here, but I did my best and I'm gonna keep working on it and keep bringing you more videos um, showing nature journaling in the canopy and trying to use nature journaling as an applied tool for learning and for conservation because I think that pages like this um, can help uh, communicate the plight of a lot of these organisms, help conserve the biodiversity in the canopy, in the rainforest in general, and hopefully help um, researchers and biology students learn more um, about this amazing world that we live in. Now I just have to get down out of this tree.
thanks to all my Patreon members for making this show possible. And if you want to find out more and join the community of people that believe that nature journaling can make the world a better place, check out this link right here. And if you can't wait all the way until next week for the next episode of the show, check out this playlist here. Bye.